Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into microservice architecture using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Well, we are going to use employee management project as an example to create a microservice architecture. Well, you can take any example of any project. For example, you can take e-commerce application or you can take any healthcare domain related application. So you can take any project as an example, but follow the same steps to create a microservice architecture using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. When we are going to create three core backend microservices, employee service, department service and organization service, and all these three microservices have their own databases. Well, we are going to use MySQL database as a database for these microservices. Okay. So whenever you create a microservice in your project, make sure that each microservice should have their own database. All right. Once we build the microservices, next we will see how these microservices communicate with each other. Well, we are going to use different ways to make a REST API call from one microservice to another microservice. For example, we'll use a REST template, we'll use web client, we'll use Spring Cloud provided open pane library. All right. So in this course, I'm going to show you a different ways to make a REST API call from one microservice to another microservice. Well, once we know how microservices communicate with each other, next we are going to implement service registry and discovery pattern in our microservices project. Well, Spring Cloud provides Spring Cloud Netflix Eureka based service registry model that we can use to implement service registry and discovery pattern in our microservices project. Well, service registry and discovery is very essential pattern that we can use to avoid hard coding, host name and ports. Next, we will implement config server to externalize the configurations of all these three microservices into a central place that is Git repository. Well, Spring Cloud provides Spring Cloud config module that we can use to implement config server to externalize the configuration, you know, files of all these three microservices into a central place. We are going to use Git repository as a storage for config server. Well, once we know how to use config server to externalize the configuration files, next we are going to implement API gateway. Well, the API gateway plays a very important role in a microservices architecture. Okay. So whenever a client want to make a call to different microservices, then client have to remember the host name and ports of all these microservices. So there should be a solution where a client can send a request to the central component. So that is where the API gateway comes into picture. So whenever a client sends a request to the backend microservices, then client have to send a request to the API gateway first and then API gateway based on the routing rules, it will route that request to appropriate microservice. Okay, so this is how the API gateway plays an important role in a microservices architecture. Well, Spring Cloud provides Spring Cloud gateway model to implement API gateway pattern in a microservices architecture. Next, once we know how to implement API gateway in a microservices project, next we are going to implement a distributed tracing in a microservices architecture. Well, Spring Cloud provides Spring Cloud Sleuth model, which we can use to implement a distributed tracing in our microservices project. Well, along with Spring Cloud Sleuth, we'll also use Zipkin to visualize the tracing log information in a user interface. Well, Zipkin provides a user interface to track the trace information through web application. Okay, so once we know how to implement distributed tracing using Spring Cloud Sleuth, next we are going to create a simple React application which will make a REST API call to backend microservices. Well, we are going to implement circuit breaker pattern in an employee service because the employee service is internally calling department service. And let's say due to some reason, department service is down. Then the employee service won't get a response from the department service, isn't it? And then again, the employee service will send internal server error to the API gateway and then API gateway will send that response back to the client. All right. So in order to avoid this kind of issue, we can use circuit breaker pattern. So this circuit breaker pattern helps the employee service to avoid a continuous calls to the department service whenever department service is down and this circuit breaker pattern will help employee service to return some default response back to the api gateway and the api gateway will send that default response to the client all right so this is the simple microservices architecture that we are going to follow to create a microservices project using spring boot and spring cloud all right great i will see you in the next lecture